For years, I've held out. I kept telling myself that I don't need a desktop. My setup is good mm -hmm. enough. But every time I pushed my LLMs to their limit, I had a feeling I was leaving some power on the table. Now I'm done holding back. Let's build out an insane computer. Right now, I'm running my RTX 4090 through Oculink. I have a whole setup video on how I set that up. Basically, it's a eGPU kind of setup. And Oculink operates at crazy fast speeds already, giving me 64 gigabit per second speed. But now that PCIe 5 is getting to be the standard, that gets you up to 128 gigabit per second. Now, the last time I built a machine, let's just say it's been a while. This is my old case of the last machine I built myself. Looks got spider webs on it. And it's huge. I don't want to have a loud thing in my office that's taking up so much room. Now for that one, I went to my local micro center. I got all the parts. I built everything myself, but it's been 12 years and a number of things have changed. <laughs> So this time I'm doing things a little bit differently. I want to eventually build my own machine, but let's just say that the component landscape has changed a lot since I've last done it. And I want to save some time this time around. And I want to learn from the pros because I don't want any accidents to happen. <laughs> The goal for this build is simple. Build a machine that's as small as possible and also give me significantly better performance. I'll be reusing my RTX 4090 in this build, but everything else is getting upgraded. You might say, well, the 5090s are out. Well, yeah, I'm hoping to find one of those, but I do have a 5080, which I'm gonna swap into the Oculink dock and stay tuned for those videos. That's gonna be a separate story. I'm going to Micro Center because, well, I love that store, first of all. And because I love that store, I'm there all the time. So it's been in my videos. So Micro Center reached out and they wanted to partner with me on a video. Now, what I'm mostly excited about is having somebody else do this for me. I mean, I've done this before. I know how to do it, but it's probably going to take me way longer than it's going to take them because they do this all day, every day. So they're going to be able to put this together quickly and professionally. This is how I'm going shopping. So this thing has been awesome. It's been amazing. Yeah. I love it. I just tried gaming with it too. I tried playing Doom Eternal because that's really all I know. But really, I've been testing LLMs on it and it's going through Oculink. So I'm not taking full advantage of PCIe, which is yeah. what I want to do. And it's a proprietary cable, so you can't really do anything with that. Yeah, exactly. I guess what we need is a motherboard, RAM, SSDs, yeah. and a CPU. Sure. And um, we can talk about like the smaller case. I actually have this on the display and I was checking the dimensions to see if it would fit this card. Okay. Uh, we can go look at it right now. If yeah, you know. let's check it out. Typically when shopping for a computer build, you go with a CPU, motherboard, RAM, and things like that, the components, right? But since my highest priority is space here, I'm starting out with a case. This one's kind of nice. I like the style, but it's a little bit too big. I want to go even smaller. These kinds of larger cases are called ATX for Advanced Technology Extended. That's what that stands for. I didn't know till today. They come in these huge ATX towers. That's kind of what I had before. And then they come with smaller ATX sizes. And then there is the micro ATX, which is actually the size that I'm getting. There's also mini ITX. ITX stands for Information Technology Extended, and they're even smaller cases. Look how tiny this thing is. Very cute. Of course, these have a lot less upgradability options and a lot less space in them. And definitely sometimes an issue fitting in a full-size card like the 4090 that I have. Let's do the one you picked. Sure. That's, that looks good. And it's white. It is white. It's going to match my video card. Yeah. One of the reasons I like coming to the store is not only can you get your hands like physically on things and see how they are and how they feel, but also you have things like this on the back wall where it's discounted items, motherboards, cases, deals. So every end cap has some kind of deal that you can check out that you just don't see if you're shopping for an object online. It's definitely for browsers and I like to browse. I thought I was going to ask you, since you're using this for LLMs and other fun projects of the sort, are you aiming to go Intel to take advantage of the NPU and the Core Ultra series, or do you want to shoot for AMD? You can't go wrong with either AMD or Intel at this point. There is, however, one thing I want to be ready for, and that's the new AMD chip that's landing next month. So I want to make sure I'm compatible with that. And that's why I'm going to go with an AMD system this time around. What about that new AMD chip that's coming out in March? The 9950X 3D. Yes. Yeah, I mean that thing is gonna be a monster. Is it gonna be the same socket as if we yes. get a board right now? Yeah, if you got a, if you got one of these board like uh, AM5 boards right now, you could easily plop that in later. Let's do that because then I can just swap the chip out for the yeah. new. And then you'll be one. able to game pretty well with it. We'll look at this other side here then. 
they got floor to ceiling motherboard wall. I call this the mother wall whenever I come here, but it's kind of intimidating, especially because I haven't been doing this for a number of years. So I'm kind of glad they're building this out for me. Oh yeah, up there, the B650 Aorus Ice. It's white. It's gonna give us Gen 5 for your uh, graphics card slot. So when you get a 5090, you're not gonna be ha like having its bandwidth in any way. And um, small. So Gen 5 PCIe? Yep, on the uh, 16, or at least it's supposed to in theory. You can get easily 192 gigs of RAM on this thing, which Ooh. will be very nice for DeepSeek. Assuming it's not problematic to do that locally anymore. <laughs> uh, we'll see, we'll see how that turns out. Yeah. So this will be easy. Do you want to go ahead and start with like a 16 core processor or? Uh, yeah, let's let's do something nice. Sure. We can do the 9950X. That's currently the latest and greatest. And then when the X3D is out, you can replace that with this. Though I'll be honest with you, there's not going to be much reason to replace it. I feel like this processor is going to be plenty sufficient. It's going to be more capable for gaming just because yeah. of the 3D V cache. This is going to be my first AMD chip. When I built machines, I always yeah. went Intel, but that was like silly brand loyalty that I had sure. no, no reason to really. I still fall onto that sometimes. <laughs> And then uh, what do we need? We need RAM, right? Yeah, then we need RAM. Which RAM is actually going to be better as far as performance? So the thing is, we're not overclocking it anyway because of the fact that you're running four sticks and uh, neither Intel nor AMD likes that. Mm -hmm. We can do these T-Create Experts, two kits of this. These are very low profile and I can do an air cooler on top. 192, right? Yeah, 192. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of, a lot of fun. It's insane. I've never had that much RAM in a computer. And we could just do a Phantom Spirit. The uh, other fans for the uh, case. Okay. Three fans on top, three fans on the bottom, just max out the airflow. Do you imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah why not? <laughs> How much storage do you want to start with? If I go with four, let's do a 990 Pro for good reads, good writes, and uh, good sustainability. Now this is the same kind of drive that I just used to test out my Thunderbolt 5 connectivity. I'll link to that video down below in case you missed it. But this time I'm going with four terabytes. Obviously you have your own graphics card and your power supply, so we don't need to add that on there. How long does it take, by the way? Honestly, our techs are pretty good. It's not gonna take them. They ask for four hours and they only do that because sometimes like a part is DOA and if we need to go ahead and replace it, we don't wanna like trouble you with having you wait here two extra hours to like see that, you know, us yeah. do it. That's beautiful. Four hours is amazing. The march to the checkout begins. I just wanna say, Thank you, Daniel. It was great to actually be able to help you out again. Appreciate it. <laughs> and I'll person. see you guys in a couple of hours, I guess. Yeah. So I left this in the hands of experts. In the meantime, I decided to go grab a coffee and do some work. I think it's wild that they can do a build in just four hours. Last time I did it, it took me days to do it. A few hours later. I think my build is done. Let's go. <laughs> really excited because that thing is pretty. Thank you, sir. I actually really like that case. If you have questions, like, especially if you're just like, hey, this is happening on my PC, what's going on? Like, feel free to text me. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Take your time looking around in the back, and if we can do anything else for you, come back and see us. Now. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. Looking forward to trying this thing out. Oh, I'm excited. It's always a good day. Yeah. <laughs> you putting that together yourself? Yeah. What is this? That's your power supply? Yeah. yeah. And I had one just connected to a video card. Yeah. But then I thought, okay, I'm building this out, so I might as well buy another power supply. Yeah. All right, good man. Luck. Have a good one. Since Micro Center is sponsoring this episode, I give them a shout out and mention that February is BYO month. So BYO, build your own. So you can pick out all the parts and build the entire PC right from the parts they have in the store, or you can mix and match and bring some of your own, kind of like what I just did. Gonna take this puppy to the office and test it out. Let's go. Look at this. Wow. That is one beautiful machine. Nice job, Micro Center. Just one peek under my desk and you'll understand why I've made a good decision by having somebody else build it. Look at that cable management inside. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to do this. Let's turn this on for the first time. Here we go. Whoa. This thing definitely has some fans in it. It's not silent. Okay, it's calming down now. It's calming down. Nice, smooth sound. And I'm on the desktop. Just silly how fast that is. This is probably the fastest Windows machine I've ever seen. How quickly that browser opens up. I didn't even know that Windows machines can be this fast. And there's my GeForce RTX 4090. Shh, the computer. 
are sleeping. I wanted to see how much power it takes while it's sleeping. And it's sipping. I mean, it should be zero, right? Ideally, but it has to stay awake for a little bit, like kind of in a dreamlike state. 2.8. That's how many watts it takes for this computer to dream. Well, we'll just have to wake it up now, won't we? That's from Pulp Fiction. Reference, if anybody gets it. Wow. Okay, jumped up to 176, 196, 200. And that's a big jump when we turn it on at first, but that's only the initial jump. It's gonna settle down a little bit. So we're hovering just about 96 to 100 watts of power while sitting there and not sleeping. So it's a lot of power to be using. I've downloaded and installed Olama, and now I'm running DeepSeek R1, 1.5 billion parameter. I know we're starting there, okay? It's small, it's kind of useless, but it gives us a baseline of comparison. So I'm gonna say, write a story, and there it goes. Look at that, that's pretty fast. <laughs> Wow, is it gonna finish? I think it's in a loop. We've entered a loop, folks. This is what happens when you're using a 1.5 billion parameter model. It's not too smart. 304 tokens per second, though, is really fast. That's kind of an anomaly. Not sure how that happened, but let's try that again. 272 tokens per second, that's more like it. And that's actually on par of what I'm getting with my 5080 now compared to this 4090. Let's take a look at the GPU here. We got 24 gigs of RAM, so we have some room to wiggle. Let's write another story and see what happens with that GPU. Just a little tiny little bump there. Nothing to worry about. Now, previously I ran Llama 3.18 billion, and just for comparison's sake, let's run that one again. I'm gonna use verbose, of course, and then say, write story, and boom, there it goes. It's not as fast this time. 135 tokens per second for this one. Let's do that again, but this time I wanna keep an eye on the power usage, and we are jumping a little bit to four a little bit not a little bit to 440 watts here while the generation is happening and then back down and that's kind of to be expected let's go with deep seek 14 billion which should still fit into this card if you don't know what i'm talking about well this card the 4090 has 24 gigs of ram which is better than the 5080 that i have that only has 16 gigs of ram and it's better because more ram means i can run larger models and larger models means i get higher quality output the 5090 has 32 gigs of RAM. One day, I'll be able to find one of those and buy it and test it on this channel. So make sure you don't miss that when I do. Oh, and if you want to see the head-to-head -head comparison of the 4090 versus the 5080, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and make that happen. The 32 billion parameter model is 20 gigs, so I got to wait for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> now, in case you're wondering, well, DeepSeek has a 70 billion and a 671 billion parameter models too. Why don't I run those? Well, if we take a look at the 70 billion parameter one, you'll see that it's 43 gigabytes in size. And that's for the Q4. Q4 means quantized. So it's quantized down to four bits. The actual full size model that's not quantized is a lot bigger than that. But even the quantized one is 43 gigs, which will absolutely not fit into the VRAM of this video card. That's why we're gonna cut this off at 32 billion parameters, which should just barely fit. And forget about that 671 billion parameter one, you'd need a lot of RAM for that, like hundreds of gigabytes of RAM. I'm trying to figure out a way how I can run that here to test it out, but let's just say I haven't come across a cost-effective solution yet. <laughs> I've got both the 14 billion and the 32 billion now. 14 billion first. Here we go, verbose. Let's do a quick hello to get it warmed up. We got 80 tokens per second for that one. And then uh, let's do write story. Boom. 76 tokens per second on this one. Not too bad. Very usable. And now we're going to do deep seek 32 billion. Now let's keep an eye on the GPU memory here. This right here is where the 14 billion one ran. So you can see we're using about half the RAM. And then here, yeah, we're close to the end there. This is the 32 billion parameter model. And we're using 21 out of 24 available. Let's do write a story. It's going at a pretty decent clip. I never read these. The other day I was running this and my wife came over and she saw my screen and she started reading it. She's like, what is this? What, what, what is this story about? I don't get it. <laughs> and I told her, uh, don't bother. It's just a bunch of gibberish. 
39.2 tokens per second on this one. So around 40, which is still quite usable for a 32 billion parameter model. Nice. Now that we're getting a sense of how this thing runs modern LLMs, I want to go back to the test that I did before where my 4090 was sitting in a dock as an eGPU talking to my computer through Oculink. And I was running this test right here, which is called LLM benchmark. There's a lot of benchmarks out there for LLMs, but I want to be consistent to see if there's any improvement. So this is what I'm going to run. It's the one by AIDatatools.com, and it's really simple to get going. That's why I'm using it. No affiliation, by the way. Pip install LLM benchmark, grab that, pop that in VS Code. By the way, I did set up this machine to be kind of an AI dev machine. If you wanna see instructions on how to do that, let me know in the comments. And once that's installed, all we have to do is say LLM benchmark run. Boom, and there it goes. Now there's also a GitHub page for this, so you can check that out. I came here to mostly show you what's going to be run. So we're going to run Gemma 2, Mistral 7B, 5.4, DeepSeek R1, DeepSeek R1, 14 billion, Lava, and Lava 13 billion. And that takes a little bit of time to run, so I'll be right back. So we've got some numbers here, and this is an improvement. It's not a huge improvement, but still, it is an improvement. And I'm kind of happy about that. For example, Mistral 7B has 158 tokens per second through PCIe 5 versus 145 through Oculink. Another example, Gemma 2, 9 billion. With Oculink, that was 89.9 tokens per second. Here, we've got 104.6. Lava 7B and 13B improvements there as well. Now, some of you might be wondering, as I did, of course, what is going on here? I thought that when the models are small enough to fit inside VRAM of a video card, they get transferred completely to the video card and they stay there and that's where the generation happens. But if that's the case, wouldn't the numbers be pretty much the same through Oculink or PCIe? What does it matter? Once the transfer is done, it's done and the generation happens on the video card, right? Yet there's still some reasons why an Oculink connection might be a little bit slower than the PCIe 5 connection. And this may not be directly related to the processing inside the GPU. That's going to be the same. This will have to do with host to GPU communication that happens during generation. So while tokens are being generated, as they do, they're streamed back to the system from the GPU over whatever connection you're using. Even after the model is completely in VRAM, every new token requires requires the CPU to send the latest prompt context and input tokens to the GPU. And then the GPU sends back the generated token back to the system. That's for text output that we see on the screen. And this communication happens continuously as the generation occurs. PCIe 5 times 16, because there's 16 lanes for the GPU, that slot has a much lower latency than the Oculink connection. And it also has a higher bandwidth. So this allows much faster token transfer back and forth between that GPU and the CPU, which happens quite frequently. Now, I wasn't going to do this but i bet you're all wondering how does the 5080 stack up compared to the 4090 i've got the 4090 here in this beautiful case built out by micro center and the 5080 i've got in my old dock it's only a couple months old it's not that old everything is kind of new so let's take a look at those numbers and here's the funny part that 5080 brand new 5080 just came out we don't even have mobile chips yet and the 5080 desktop is out but it does not beat a card that's a few years old now, the 4090. Here are the final numbers. I'll just give you this one example. Mistral 7B is 142 tokens per second from the 5080 running through the eGPU. And it's 158 tokens per second on the 4090 running through PCIe 5. Here are the rest of the numbers. It's a pretty big difference there. Now, I know you all want to see the 5090. I also want to see that. I'm waiting for that stock availability. I was not one of those lucky people that got a 5090 ahead of time to test it out. Maybe next year. I don't know. Maybe two years from now. Who knows? But eventually, I'll grab one of those and do some tests. Make sure you don't miss that. Just want to say thanks again to Micro Center for sponsoring this video and giving me this awesome awesome machine i will take good care of it i promise now if you want to see this card the 4090 in that eGPU dock and the whole setup and how i did all that i bought all the parts at micro center too by the way you can watch that video right over here thanks for watching and i'll see you next time